Hey guys, welcome to Techno News episode 28. It's been a while since I've done a news update, uh, it's been a bit of a moment. I had a lot going on over the holidays and stuff, and I've been trying to put more of a plan in place of where I want the channel to go and what I want it to feature. Uh, so this sort of got put on the back burner a little bit in the meantime. I do really appreciate all your support in the meantime though, it does mean so much. Um, and I've made good progress over the holidays actually. Uh, with the likes of me ghost reaction videos and things like that. Um, still trying to make the push for 500. I'm very, very close to that now, and I'm so grateful, as I said. Um, if you wouldn't mind hitting the sub button, if you haven't already done so, hit the thumbs up uh, on the video, ring the bell for alerts of any new content, and if you wouldn't mind leaving some feedback, just to let us know what you think of the videos, where you think I should aim, in future any improvements please let me know um any feedback is good feedback in the meantime for further updates and stuff if you follow my socials x and tiktok at technofish live and i do still stream most nights from around 10 o'clock uk time so if you want to have a discussion about any of my videos any gaming news any ghost stuff you've seen please pop by and we can have a chat uh, from around 10 o'clock as i said most nights uk here on youtube Gaming. Right, so going into the news, um, the main news of late seems to be around the game of the moment, which is Pal World. Not something I'd say I was overly interested in, but I can say it's a pale. Um, it's basically a chop shop of various games and genres, all amalgamated into one big hybrid game. At its core, it's essentially a survival game. Um, it may not look it from the videos and stuff, uh, but it's like plays a bit like Ark where you have to gather resources, build a base, and generally level up your character and your gear. However, they have thrown into the mix a lot of Pokemon esque critters that you need to collect and battle as part of the game to fight and capture different cartoony beasts, and then you can either use them to battle even harder critters or you can enslave them around your base to do monotonous jobs for you, help maintain it, uh, develop new resources, things like that. It's currently the best selling game and number one on Steam, having sold around 6 million, but it's also on Xbox Game Pass, and I think this has helped it garner some further attention. Um, it does look fun, it's not really my kind of game, I've never really played any of the survivalist type games, I might give it a look though with it being on the pass. Um, so yeah unfortunately it has drew some similarities from other games due to the popularity of it as i mentioned there's a lot of seems to be assets borrowed and tweaked from pokemon with a lot of close similarities between creatures in both the games as well as monster hunter uh, there's been notes of other sound effects gameplay features and other graphical assets borrowed from other games as i mentioned arc zelda breath of the wild a lot of this seems to be very high rule and monster hunter with the way you craft things and stuff like that unsurprisingly there is already an unofficial pokemon mod out there on the pc version which does replace the critters with actual pokemon unfortunately nintendo have already acted on this very heavily um they've clamped down on it and they've already removed people's videos showing the actual mod in action but it basically replaced your character with ash and misty and a few of the others were in there and all the animals were essentially the pokemon that they look like uh -huh. yeah so that's already out in the wild i'm not sure if they've shut the actual mod down or if they're just clamping down on people's videos and things but get that while you can Got to catch it all, as I say. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments below. Be good to hear what you think and if you think I should give it a go sometime. So that's that bit of news. Other gaming news, obviously Valorant have released some new skins in the meantime and new battle pass and some further updates. There's a new update going into day where they've changed Breeze and reopened the tunnel going into a site up mid. It was all blocked off previously, but apparently it is reopening today. So I'll have a look at that tonight, no doubt. But in sort of sadder news from Riot, they did announce that they were cutting 11% of the global workforce. Um, so that comes to around 530 staff 
being laid off, they claim due to unsustainable costs. How they can claim unsustainable costs when they charge so much for Valorant skins is beyond me. But that's what they're claiming. But as I said, unfortunately, they're not alone. They join the queue of Epic Games, Ubisoft, Amazon's Twitch, and a few other companies have all made huge cuts of late. Um, it's a bit of a strange situation, really. To me, it feels a bit of a foreshadowing shadow where AI might be getting more involved in the game development side of things. Uh, there is already use of AI in games at the minute, but it's very minimal. What do you think? Um, how do you think it's going to pan out? be interested to know what you guys make of it. It's, as I said, it's going to be inevitable down the line. AI is going to do a lot more of the work, but it's at the cost of people's jobs. It's, it's a bit much. Um, will it be as imaginative? Will it come up with as good stuff as some of the creators out there? I don't know. But let us know what you think. Speaking of Ubisoft, they also... One of the directors came out with a bit of a statement, which is a bit of a talking point, really. Again, I'd like your views on this. Um, where he basically announced that gamers need to be comfortable not owning the games anymore. Um, it's in light of, obviously, Ubisoft have Ubisoft Connect and Connect Plus, where you can play all their games. You basically just pay a subscription fee and you can play all their games. Um, similar to Xbox Game Pass and the PlayStation Network catalogue and things like that. It's basically stating that people need to accept the fact that they'll no longer own the games they play. Similar in the way the telly shows and movies are all on Netflix and stuff now. Nobody physically owns the media anymore. It's all just streamed. Um, I guess he's sort of right in a way. It sort of takes us back, actually, to be honest. I know this seems like a new concept with the digital streaming side of things which i understand i can sort of see that point from it but going back to when i was a kid i remember hiring games from blockbuster on the snares and the playstation and stuff like that xbox back in the day and going to a lad who used to run a sort of swap shop Back when I had my snares and you used to go and you had to pay £5 minimum to swap your game or if it was a higher price game you had to pay the difference and stuff. It, it was a bit dodgy how he ran it but it was a way of getting access to games that you couldn't afford. I mean obviously back then the games were like £50, £60 even then for a snares game and when you were only really getting maybe one or two at Christmas, maybe one for your birthday it was a good way of getting access to other games that you wouldn't normally be able to. The subscriptions are sort of replacing that, I guess. I don't know. I mean, what what do you guys think? A lot of the games now are free to play anyhow, so does it really make that much difference? The only bit I don't agree with, it again, was a Ubisoft game, I think it was, The Crew. Um, there's a YouTuber... I can't remember the guy's name now, but I remember seeing something in the news about a YouTuber trying to sue Ubisoft because they took down or they're taking down the game The Crew, um, which at the time was released as a product. It wasn't released as a live service. It was released as a full product, but it is online only. And they're shutting down the servers. So he's sort of trying to kick up a fuss and say, look, at the time it wasn't sold as a service, it was sold as a full complete product. You kind of do this. It's a little man shouting in a big cave, to be fair, but we'll see what comes of it. I will keep an eye out on the news and see if any more actually is said about it or if he gets anywhere and makes any progress with that. I'm sure there were a lot of other games back the sort of early 360 PlayStation era where there was a lot of online-only type content. Um, and at that point, I don't think it would have been sold as a live service because I don't think that concept had really been thought of at that point. Um, I remember 
the shadow run game i used to love that that was the shooter um a bit like valorant to some extent um that was online only but obviously that game died to death because they shut the servers down and stuff so it's a bit of a strange situation but um like i said it does sort of hark back to when i was a kid and you were renting games anyhow you know it was I can sort of see why people are getting a bit upset about it, especially on physical copies that they do actually own that are getting shut down that they can't kind of play anymore. Um, obviously, this day and age, kids aren't used to when we were kids on the consoles buying a full complete game on a cartridge or a disc, not needing updates. It just worked as it was. So I think they're a bit spoiled nowadays, but. Um, but on the back end of that, there's a lot of games getting released that are absolutely broken on release. And they just try and fix it on the fly, which I don't agree with either. But maybe that's just me being old. Um, right, so that's pretty much all the news I wanted to discuss today, um, to be honest. If you do have any thoughts on any of it, please let me know. Um, feedback in the comments or visit my stream or visit my socials um just let me know if you think i'm right or wrong in any of these points if you agree with any of the points if you disagree um it'd be good to hear from you and as i said I, I am very grateful for all the support you've given and i am pushing on i'm going to try and diverse the channel a bit i will be putting out more of these news videos alongside me ghost reaction videos me live streams me clips I am thinking of doing more in the way of the retro gaming, my life and game series that I started way back. Um, I don't know whether to start that again or just continue from where I left off because I was a bit unhappy with the way parts of it looked. But I'll, I'll have a look at that again. And yeah, if you can think of any other content you might want us to make that you think might be a good idea for us, please let us know in the comments. And in the meantime, as I said, I am eternally grateful for you all. Thank you very much for your support, and I shall see you in the next video. Have a good day. Cheers.